Hello and welcome to another edition of the Chartered Career Chat series. I am delighted today to be joined by Jonathan Lapp. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, Sinead. Thanks for the invite. Not a problem at all. It's great to get you involved. And rather than me maybe introduce you, uh, Jonathan, would you mind maybe giving us a flavour of where you're up to in your own chartered story? Um, well, my own chartered story, where am I up to? Um, I'm currently financial controller <clears throat> with m and Contractors and Mascot Construction. And probably at this point, I think of being qualified, I think it was 2014, 2015, maybe. Okay. Um, so five or six years. Um, I suppose looking back, I've probably come a long way to get to this point. Um, and I'm a bit off retirement day, so I've probably got a long way to get to this point as well. <laughs> Um, so that's kind of where I am at the moment. And in terms of maybe giving us a bit of a flavour of your journey into the profession, do you mind telling me a bit about that? Yeah, um, my journey into the profession was not the typical one. Um, I didn't go to university. Um, I didn't come with a degree or anything like that. I actually went to lower sixth at secondary school. Um, decided at that age as that I knew everything. Uh, the thing for me to do was just drop out of education altogether, get a job and earn some money. Um, so I'd done that. And I'd done that until I was about <clears throat> 23, maybe. And then I realised that, yeah, I think that was a bit of a mistake. Um, I worked in several jobs, working in factories, working in shifts, working weekends and things like that. And I just thought it would probably do better than this. Always wanted to be in business. Um, and so I got myself together and started on the accounting technicians course. Um, done it off my own back, done the first year, done the second year, uh, passed both years. Um, and once I got my, my exam results, I got a job then with a small practice um, who weren't used to people coming to them without degrees really. Um, and I think he gave me the interview just out of interest. As the, what's this guy doing? How does he come? What, what is this? Um, and he actually told me at the interview that he already had another kind of trainee starting on a training contract who had a degree and come the proper route. Mm -hmm. It would all be very, very hard and the money would be terrible and it's a lot of hard work. Um, would I still be interested? And I remember they were saying, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, and I think he was still shocked and he decided to give me a six month trial. <clears throat> um, and after a couple of weeks, he actually brought me down and, and offered me then a, a full time position and a training contract for chartered accountancy. Um, and that's really when things kind of took off from there, I think. Um, I always knew I wanted to be in business. Okay. Wasn't really sure what that was, what it looked like. Mm -hmm. And then chartered accountancy is just fulfilled everything that I kind of hoped for um, when getting into business and being able to kind of strategize and, and help decisions, make decisions and drive business forward. Um, so it's, 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 been a, it's been an up and down journey, I suppose, um, one, but I think it's probably made me a, a bit more rounded um, than some in, in decision making and, and different things. Can you maybe tell me a bit about the um, the roles you've had, you know, the nature of the work undertaken and maybe even the, the jobs you've had since qualifying? Yes, um, well, trained in practice. Um, a lot of people will know that route. Um, you can't even through, <clears throat> starting with the good old bank recs, remember plastic bags arriving on my desk full of receipts um, with a lot of far there were some dubious stains sometimes on their seats. You weren't sure if it's coffee or was it not. <laughs> uh, trying to piece together missing checks and, and just different things um, right through then to becoming a senior manager um, and a manager in the practice, managing your own team, um, bringing the other trainees kind of through their courses and things like that. Now, once I qualified then, Again, a popular thing to do seems to be uh, we move from practice out into industry. So we went and worked for a, a tech startup firm um, for just over a year. 
it was really, really busy, really hectic startup firm. Um, one guy and, and kind of all his kind of dreams and visions, and, and, and this was his baby. Uh, pretty full on. Um, kind of stayed there for about a year, just over a year, and couldn't really take the madness anymore. Um, so kind of within the fairly more structured role with then the lagging group, um, which was formerly brought over by the breeding group. So I was in there as a financial accountant, um, working within a finance team of about 10, uh, finance director, and really learned a lot there as well. Um, very structured organization, good processes, good systems in place, good people. Um, and, and that, I think, coupled with everything else I learned was kind of another string to the bow in, in the experience gain. From there then I went and worked for a PLC um, again for a short time. I um, was there for about a year and a half. Um, <clears throat> PLC life just didn't really suit me. Um, felt too much like a like a cog in a machine with kind of no real input. And I don't think nobody really knew what you were doing or the result of what you were doing or were you even there sometimes. <laughs> um, and decided that's not really me, not really what I wanted to do. I always wanted to be kind of at the front of a business, helping a business grow, um, helping it succeed, making decisions and, and that type of thing. So I decided then to take the financial controller position where I am now, Mascot and M&M, both SME companies, um, both fairly, fairly well, combined turnover in the region of 30 to 40 million. Um, and we've in around 50 staff amongst both companies direct, um, probably the same again indirect. And I have to say, it's really exactly what I've been looking for. Um, the financial controller role I'm doing at the minute has allowed me to build my own team, um, apply my knowledge of all the systems and processes I've learned along the way from, from the different roles uh, of what to do well and, and what not to do as well. Um, I'm reporting in the board level, um, so the role is very much strategic in driving the business forward, looking forward into kind of two year, three year forecasts and, and business plans, and then doing my bit with the team to measure that progress to see how we're, we're coming out against that plan, um, and then taking that, rolling it up again, going again for the next two to three years. And it's really it's really enjoyable. I think when you sit and you go through that process and you put a plan in place um, and you actually measure along the way with that plan and you can see the results, you can see what you're doing is adding value to the business, is growing the business. And for me, that, that's, that's really the big thing with accountancy. Um, I know it's numbers based, but I think today's accountant really is more than numbers. It, it, it's really outside the numbers. Um, the numbers for me, I think if you have good people in place and you've got the correct processes and you've got a good system, which you know most people have the accounting systems now, the numbers kind of do themselves. We really add value to the numbers and to your business is being able to understand those numbers, being able to describe them to people who necessarily aren't numbers based. Uh, people may be operationally minded, they like to be out on site building stuff, don't really care about numbers. <laughs> but our role is to kind of let them understand the numbers in a way that, that they can and that they're able to, and that allows the business to grow with everybody on the same hymn sheet, if you like. Um, and the thing for me as an accountant, and, and what I try to do is add value outside of the numbers. <clears throat> It's very much more than the maybe the traditional stigma, um, Jonathan, that we're bean counters or just number crunchers. It's so much wider. It's so much more invested in leadership, strategic, um, business decision making, problem solving, um, as you're rightly saying. You really are, you know, and it's, it's one of those things. And, and as you find probably when, when, when you get to the level of, of financial controller or finance manager or something like that within business, as I have found, you generally have finance, but normally along with that comes IT and human resources as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and you're terrifying, I suppose, account, accountants, the same as a safe pair of hands, yes. But um, if you think about the roles that are out there within different businesses, different companies, um, there isn't many roles really that could look after three different functions. Very true, very true. Look after three different functions, I suppose. Yeah. If we think about the qualification then, Jonathan, do you think then you could um, say from your point of view that it definitely has an impact on career progression, you know, even reflecting on your own journey? Absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, I often think about kind of looking back to the day when I actually decided, right, I'm going to go here, I'm going to do accounting technicians. Mm -hmm. um, if I hadn't have done that, I really don't know like what would have happened, where I would have went, what I would have done. Um, the qualification for me has just allowed me to get where I am today. It's, it's, it's kind of shown me the potential that I have to get to where I am, but it's also allowed me the opportunity to, to get there, if you know what I mean. Uh, if I didn't have that, I, I probably wouldn't be in the position I am today. Do you think there are certain skills that you need to maybe undertake the journey? Is there any particular traits or qualities, you know, um, folks should have coming into chartered accountancy? Um, a big thing for me is, is, is attitude. Uh, and you need, you need to work hard. It's one of those things, <clears throat> and it's the age old saying, nothing in life is handed to you. And you know, when it's true, the qualification has been excellent for me. Um, it's not easy to get hard work, um, but the rewards out of that are, are, are everything that you want them to be. Um, so for me, thinking back through my journey of those nights, um, having to travel to Belfast on a Saturday for my classes, working all week, Monday to Friday, trying to do my studying in the evening and at the weekends, missing all the good weather because the exams were always at the wrong times. <laughs> Look and say when it's sunny, yeah. all your friends are out at barbecues and parties and you really need to kind of want to do it. Uh, the right attitude, you need to be in the correct place um, to get through it. Um, and that, that's probably the big thing for me is attitude and, and, and hard work. Looking back and maybe reflecting on your journey even now here today, is it something you would recommend, you know, if somebody else is, in their early stages of considering the next steps of the career path and you know business accountancy is is in their consideration would you recommend chartered accountancy without a doubt um for me it, it, it's one of the it, it's one of the only professions where you, you can really work anywhere uh, mm -hmm. yes you can get an accountancy qualification you can work on accounts um you, you, you can really work anywhere. You, you, could, you could run a business. Um, you could open your own business. You can, you, you can really do anything with it. Um, you can sit on a board. Um, you, can, you can work for a charity. You can, it opens so many doors. And again, it's, it's probably one of the professions, one of the very few professions where you can actually say that. You can work in any industry um, anywhere in the world, really. Um, it, it really is that broad. Well said. No, I totally agree. And sometimes there's just that misconception that it is um, a homegrown qualification. You know, it's Chartered Accountants Ireland, but it's international, as you're rightly saying. And yeah. it does translate across all sectors and across all roles. You don't have to be the traditional um, accountant. No, and, and to be honest with you, I, I very rarely call myself an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, it's kind of that kind of stigma you're saying you're accounting people imagine you being in this dark dingy office with their doing books and books and adding up receipts <laughs> <laughs> it's a very social profession i find it really is um and i mean uh, <clears throat> within chartered accountants you know yourself there, there's so many different groups and societies to be involved with um it was in the young professionals for a short period of time uh, with yourself um, and then went on to kind of members in business whenever I felt it was a wee bit too old then for the young professionals. I'm still clinging on at times, <laughs> <now>, I'll admit. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there, there, like, there's so much and 
I suppose when I, when I say it takes it takes the right attitude and a lot of hard work. Um, as with anything like this, I suppose if it, you you work hard and you play hard, there's there's plenty of fun time to be had as well. Plenty of nights out, plenty of balls. Um, the night of the races um, is always a big big event as well. As you say, we're we're busy, we're working hard, but we're we're equally playing hard, which I think is a, a great rounded balance to have. Yeah, uh huh. And that's a bit nobody ever thinks about or sees with accountants. They just think they work and they go home when they're born, but we're not really. We're rock stars, Jonathan. Rock that's right, stars. Yeah, we're rock stars, that's it. <laughs> Jonathan, you have been great. Thank you so much for sharing all that today. It's really, really appreciated and continued success now with your own chartered career journey. And thank you again for your time and um, joining us today for the Chartered Career Chat Series. Not a problem. Anytime, Sinead. Thank you very much. Thanks a million. All the best.